Hello everyone, I greet in the name of God Almighty. My name is supposed to Nathan Salas and today we have a very interesting video to react to. And this one says that the biggest mystery in the Quran and then this video was made by the believer. I believe that we're going to learn a lot in essence as far as this video is concerned because it has something to do with God and then also his sonship. So if today happens to be the first time of you taking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, before we get on to the video, I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's opinion on total belief this is basically for educational purposes and i believe that at the end of this video we all are going to learn from this so guys without any further ado let's get down to this video and check out this mystery in the quran now in surah to toba verse 30 allah mentions yahudu, yahudu ibn allah. the jews said that Uzair is the son of God. And the Christians said that Jesus is the son of God. That is the, what they say with their mouths. That is a statement that they have brought forward. Allah mentions here, that they simply resemble or reiterate the words of those who went before them. You know, may God destroy them. Like, you know, God damn them, in other words, for what they're saying. Now, this thing, you know, قالت اليهود عزير ابن الله. Who was Uzair? That it is not Ezra, Uzair. وقالت اليهود عزير ابن الله. That Uzair is the son of God. Uzair is Osiris, the Egyptian god from Egyptian mythology. Now, I wanted to share this with you and go through the detail. Now, at first, it may sound bizarre that why is Uzair Osiris? Now, Osiris is the Greek rendition of his name. And then, you know, later on, Romanized and the whole thing. But his name, so in the Bible, he's mentioned as Osir. Now, generally, in Arabic, he is, they do write the Greek version as well, Osiris, like that. But they write Osir. Osir is uh, how they write Osiris. Now, Egyptologists have vocalized the name, those who study hieroglyphics and the, uh, the ancient sites and everything. The name Osiris is mentioned there and there are quite a few ways of mentioning this name. Some of these are Asar, Usar, Usir, Wasir, Usir, Usair. Notice it's very similar to Osair. Now these are Eg Egyptian names now why was he called Osiris? Is because he was taken up by the Greeks. We'll, we'll learn about this later on. And the IS at the end, yeah, is actually a Greek um, it's sign. It's a, you know, most Greek names end with an IS, masculine names. And so Osir, Osir is Osiris. But the IS here is because of the Greek. In the Quran, it's closer to the Egyptian name than it is to the Greek. So, it says here, Osiris was one of the most important gods of ancient Egypt. He was both a god of fertility and the embodiment of the dead and resurrected king. So he was actually killed and he, 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 he um, came back to life in the afterlife or the underworld, you could say. And there's a lot of uh, mythology associated with that. But the point is, there are similar beliefs, we'll speak about this, there are similar beliefs to the belief of Isa and what happened to Isa, Isa. Who is Osiris, first of all? Osiris is the first pharaoh, he's the, he's the child of the sun god, the great sun god Ra. So you have the great sun god and then he has these children. Um, now people feel that Ra ended up becoming too Ra. <laughs> <laughs> he became like, he wasn't 
really too interested in people and so on and so forth. So from the children so, so, uh, that Ra has, I mean, there's uh, four particular siblings, uh, two girls, two boys, and you have Osiris, Seth, Seth, sorry, and uh, Isis, who's the sister of Osiris, who marries Osiris. And they later on give birth to Horus, who is another famous Egyptian uh, god. But what's special about Osiris is he is the one who deposes Ra. So they get rid of the sun god Ra. And he becomes the first ruler on earth. He is seen as the god of life, the god of death. He is seen as the god of the underworld, the god of agriculture. It was through him that the Nile would flow that you see for for the Egyptians Nile the river Nile meant life okay so for Osiris he was one of the he is seen as one of the greatest figureheads in Egyptian mythology somebody that he is the one who has put order in place in the world from chaos he put structure in there he is seen as the god of compassion the kind of Rahim and remember he's not seen as God God but a figure God well, as in a person who is like this a bit like Hindu mythology in that sense the way you'll see Ram and you'll see these characters so like that now what happens with him is he is uh, killed out of kind of jealousy by his brother Seth uh, he is then brought back to life by, uh, by Isis his wife who's also his sister <laughs> interesting kind of relationship going on there but uh and in some narrations that set uh, set what he does is he when he kills him he cuts his body he kind of dismembers it into so many pieces and spreads spreads it out over egypt so isis has to go about finding all these pieces she brings them together and then mummifies him and he was the first person to be mummified in Egyptian history. He is the first pharaoh, by the way. So that was his title whilst he was living, the first pharaoh. Now, once you have this backdrop to why, who Osiris is, and he has, by the way, those of you that have seen um, the, the kind of, uh, there's a pine cone staff, the stick, uh, that is actually a symbol of um, of Osiris. Now you have to remember something. Growing up in this culture, because this is where the Israelites grew up, especially in the time of Moses. This is where Moses grew up. Osiris was this figure, and remember, he's not seen as ultimate god. He's seen as a person. The way, like in Hindu mythology, you're going to see Ram. Ram is even though he's seen as God, but he's seen as a man. Ram and Sita and him going to rescue Sita and he's a hero, Ram is. Now, in a similar way, Osiris is a hero who kind of deposes uh, Ra and he kind of sets things up for mankind and he does all these great things for mankind. Now, these people, you see the Jewish people in early, the, in the time of Moses, they would have been heavily influenced with the figurehead, with this personality of Osiris, just as all Christians were. Now, you see, and an example of this is Surah Al-A'raf, verse 138, where Allah says, Waja was na see, once Moses the Exodus. Now look at this verse. Waja was na bi bani Israel al bahar So Allah says, we traversed, we took them across the sea the Israelites so they came across a people who were worshipping some idols this is who this is the Jews because at that time the Israelites were the Jews okay so so they had these idols so they cried out to Moses why do you make a figurehead of a god for us the way they've got these gods? 
He said that indeed you are a people so deep in your ignorance. That you see, this was the Israelites as they were emerging from Egypt. They had a huge baggage, a huge culture. The Quran is quoting that there. You see, they would have seen, even though God is obviously God and they're accepting Moses, but they would have seen Usair, or in Arabic Uzair, as, as a divine figurehead, like a semi, the way people in India, for example, imagine they embrace Islam, but they would still have a reverence for like Ram, Sri Ram. They would think that, you know, oh, Sri Ram was an amazing person and he had divine, like a kind of a divinity, not in the way you might think of God, but a kind of divinity to him, that he was a chosen or he was a son of God, one might say, especially in their time. Uh, in their language. So hence وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ أُزَيْرٌ إِبْنَ اللَّهِ So the early Jews had said that about Osiris and speaking on how much this culture of Osiris was embedded in Egyptian uh, surroundings and uh, Egyptian understanding is I speaking of the staff thing, the, the stick, I want to take our attention to, and I know many people may disagree with me on this interpretation. Yeah. But I want to take our attention to Surah Taha. Yeah, so you've got um, verse 17. Yeah. Allah addresses Moses and he says, Wama tilka ya What is that that you hold in your right hand? <laughs> You see, now, this verse is incredibly interesting. Why? Because what does Musa alayhi salam respond with? You see, he says, Qala hiya asai, asaya. He said that this is my staff, my stick. That atawakkaw alayha, that I, you know, I lean on it. And wa ahushu biha ala ghanami. And I use it when I'm, you know, seeing to my, tending to my flock of sheep. I will kind of use this stick and uh, <laughs> and he says and I have other needs with this stick as well why do you think that you see the general understanding is that Moses why did he have this staff oh because he was a shepherd fair enough I actually think part of this stick thing was the culture in which Moses grew up with the pharaohs. See the pharaohs, this stick and especially the pine cone staff was symbolic of Osiris. That Osiris, this thing, this is that, that this is what he had. And hence the pharaohs all had it, this kind of staff. And Moses السلام, grew up in that culture, that this was the, the power thing, this was the slick thing, this was the awesome thing to do to have a kind of a stick like that and in some ways I feel that that's what Allah uh, kind of just highlights not to criticize but to show that look that kind of connection and in these verses I feel Moses recognizes that and hence he doesn't answer it like that he says because Allah says yeah, and what is that, by the way, in your right hand? He says, it's my stick. He could just stop there. He goes on to justify why he has it. <laughs> you know, I lean on it. I, I tend to my flock with it. You know, and I've got other needs in it as well. <laughs> You know, drop it. Wow. This is a very interesting uh, mystery, of course, that we have listening to. That's from the uh, Quran. How I wish I know the speaker, even though this video was made by the believer. I could have loved to know the speaker to kind of maybe go check out some of his videos or maybe probably some of his books that maybe probably he have 
write so that maybe probably I can learn some few things you understand from him because when you listen to the video he went on to explain you understand who was Osiris and then make us understand that he was what a son of the sun god right yeah and then from there he make us to understand that there were four two boys two girls and then his brother said decide to kill him right his brother killed him but then the sister whom he got married to wow what an incest <laughs> well anyway now raise him up so in egypt he was just recognized as a god even though a figure but like a god because they believe that you understand he is the god of the dead the living agriculture and all that to fast forward in and everything he went on to emphasize on moses we all understand in and everything that transpired in understand between Jesus and moses and then pharaoh and all that so he went further in a sense to explain how when god in a sense called moses right and then he asked him what do you hold in your right hand that is when he showed him the sign by seeing the burning fire and all those things. Asked him, what do you hold in your hand and then he went on to talk about in a sense it's a stick he used it in a sense maybe to support himself or maybe probably to control the sheep and all those things even though that's not what god was asking him like <laughs> as he was explaining that in that kind of struck my mind i was like really why is it that in a sense i didn't think of this like wow that's a very interesting one even though moses you understand did not but then he went on to emphasize and then that stick was not just a stick but then they are, therefore is actually the symbol of power of the osiris which means that because of where he come from you know they still have that way of still should i say worshiping you understand that they are sun god and all that because we all know that in a sense we are not worshiping in a sense the almighty god before god in a sense called moses and then sent him to the house of pharaoh to be able to like to let his people go now when you look at it in a sense you realize that there are a lot of hidden innocent things that were just happening that we are not in a sense maybe thinking genesis about those kind of things in as much as in a sense he was holding it but then he was still holding on to that osiris that symbol right even though he went on to try to justify it by saying that oh i used to do this i used to do that that's the same thing that you see maybe probably people who do not believe in almighty god or worship all those objects and all those things right what did they tell that oh yeah this is for my safety this one he do this this one he protected but nobody protects nobody support is only the almighty god that protect it's only the almighty god that give you life is the almighty god that provide for you is the almighty god that do everything for you as a matter of fact he created you so he know your needs so he is the one you understand who is actually taking care of you but you using anything in a sense in form of symbol or something that you think that is your source of inspiration or whatever you think that it is in your life just like how moses was holding that very stick and then thinking that that's his support right but then that's not the case because it is almighty god in a sense who is there for us it is almighty god in a sense who protect us it's almighty god who support us so what in a sense i'm trying to say in a sense in this um very video is that submit in a sense to the almighty god for he is your lord he created you he know your needs don't think that in a sense, don't trust or believe in anything you see in this very world and think that is your source of support. No, it is actually the Almighty God. All those things are just there, right? And they are just there on a temporal basis. I believe that the Egyptians, as of then, they were thinking that, of course, Osiris, in a sense, is their God. Osiris, in a sense, do everything for them. Or Osiris, in a sense, of course, he even makes you understand the nail the river nail in a sense to flow right but is that the case no it is almighty god who created everything it is almighty god that makes it in a sense to flow but then as of then that is their own belief that is what they believe in even though whatever they believe in a sense you are not true thank god that he was able to see the people see the people suffering and therefore decide to send his servant moses to come and redeem his 
children but then one thing that i was just a bit surprised about it is like how a brother and a sister they marry each other well so many things like so many mystery that kind of need much uh explanation and that's the reason why you see i said that at the beginning of the video that how i wish i know the speaker or maybe a way of speaking to him maybe probably i could have kind of asked some kind of question right because the reason why i'm saying so is that because if you look at some of the mystery on um cain and abel that is in the quran for instance that we're talking about you understand how adam give birth to them they are like they are giving birth to twins 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 right because he has only have 40 children but then the thing is twins of same set you understand are not supposed to marry but they can you understand marry others so i wanted to like ask a question that whether is it the same thing that makes uh the osiris innocent children to marry his sister uh, so then was it not a sin so i wanted to like kind of ask this very question but then some of you have listened to me so if you know you understand the answer to this of course you can answer it to me you understand at the comment section or if you can be able to like tell me the person that made this video if i can be able to maybe contact the person and then maybe probably ask the person some kind of little questions concerning the ministry concerning this very video i would love to do that so i would like to see your thoughts and opinion concerning this video at the comment section and then may god bless you as you do so so this is the end of my video if you like my reaction you should like share and subscribe and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys you remain blessed and i see you in my next video. Bye-bye.